I'm wearing a green sweater. I feel like this is gonna be an issue. Happy holidays, everyone. For the last video of the year, I thought that we could do something a little bit chill, retrospective-ish, and I felt like there was no better way to do that than with a good old ranking video. I asked you guys to send in your favorite pop culture or me moments from the past year to help me out, mainly because I have the memory retention of an elderly person, but it seems like some of you guys might too, actually. <laughs> but it was very entertaining to go through, and we got a good batch. The lowest tier today is gonna be the my brother will be sending me this on Instagram in six months. Now, if any of you guys happen to have a sibling who's a millennial, you probably have experienced experienced this before. I happen to have several of them, so I experienced this threefold. If you're a bit confused, for context, my sister started saying slay last week, and my brother just sent me this yesterday. It's kind of like when a small child sees an acorn for the first time and brings it to you, expecting it to also be the first time you've ever seen an acorn. Except, of course, this is like my 30-year-old brother showing me memes like this. I want to ride my bicycle. And then when I didn't laugh at it, asked if I knew who Queen were. So this is going to be where any memes or pop culture moments that didn't really do it for me end up landing. Next, we have Antiheroed, also could be seen as receiving the antihero treatment. This is for the memes that were beaten so aggressively to death that while they may have been funny at one point, I do not find them funny anymore. Of course, inspired by the lovely Taylor Swift running a remix train on her song Antihero. Give it up for the St. Patrick's Day version of Antihero, everyone! Good waiting for you to be great is definitely for the memes and moments that were good for what they were, but I feel like they're definitely a product of their time. Subjective sneak are for the ones that some of you guys might not agree with being so high up, and that's fine, but I do think you're wrong, and I find them hilarious. The final tier we have today is AAC, this stands for Art and Charts. This is for the memes and moments that not only outdid themselves artistically and culturally, but also did numbers. Before we get into it though, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Audible. Audible is a leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. They've got everything from bestsellers to new releases, tons of different genres, and they now even host podcasts. I've been using Audible for years at this point, and it's completely changed how much I'm able to read in a year. Now I listen to them on walks, when I'm doing errands, pretty much any time I have my earbuds in. My favorite features from them are definitely how customizable the reading speeds get, and that you can actually bookmark clips of the book and annotate in the app. I think my favorite audiobook from this year definitely has to go to the Secret History by Donna Tartt. It honestly shocked me that for how overhyped that book is, I still found it so much better than I thought it would be. Like I just wanted to permanently live in this book, and whenever I go on like walks in the fall and listen to it, it just really enhanced the experience. Audible's also got Audible Plus, where with a membership you can get full access to their Plus catalog, which has thousands of select originals, audiobooks, podcasts, guided meditations, and even ad-free versions of popular shows and exclusive series. And you can download or stream your titles without any limit because you can listen to everything offline. Audible's got thousands of titles to choose from, so you're bound to find something you want to check out. If you want to give it a try, you can go to audible.com slash or text kcianzo to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. That's audible.com slash or text kcianzo to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial with Audible. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring. Definitely check them out if you're interested, but Otherwise, let's get back to the video. The dream face reveal was definitely a really big one. But I'm gonna be totally honest, I didn't find it that funny. I mean, the Aang ones were kind of funny, but like overall, I don't know. Maybe it's just because personally, if I posted my face and he's ugly trended worldwide, I'd probably change all of your lives drastically for the worse. I feel like it was definitely at risk of getting anti hero if it went on a little bit too long, but I feel like right now it's probably belonging and good waiting for you to be great. As it should be, Lisa Rinna Eminem was sent in. This was truly the creme de la creme. This is my favorite meme of the year. It originally started out with this tweet, which then turned into this edit. Then it turned into this edit. There were a lot of edits. It had all the bones of a good meme though. There was variation, a great song in the background, even a little bit of a mystery too. Like why is Lisa Rinna an Eminem? And why does Joey Fatone's version look so much scarier? Also, Lisa Rinna Eminem just rolls off the tongue a lot better. Like, I'm sorry, Joey Fatone Eminem phonetically is a nightmare. I think what really tied this meme in a bow though is the fact that Lisa Rinna actually responded to it. But what makes it so good is the way that she responded with this weird 3D model and then proceeded to hashtag the wrong lyric. It does kind of look like a Don't Hug Me I'm Scared character though. Art and charts for sure though. Okay, I'm gonna admit the two on meme is definitely a subjective sneak. Out of all the submissions I got, no one brought this one up, but this got a giggle out of me every time without fail. It never got old to me. And I also love anything that involves giving Tanashi more promo. The only issue is that these are impossible to find now. My search results so far have been extensive, slightly embarrassing, and still unsuccessful. Julia Fox was sent in a lot. It makes sense. 2022 was definitely her year. You had Uncut Gems, that 
photo shoot in a dirty snowbank. Why does this look like slightly biblical? I think realistically she belongs somewhere in the middle between art and charts and subjective sneak, but I'm gonna put her in subjective sneak. Someone sent in young gravy, like the person. Can I be honest for a second? Something about this man is unsettling. I don't know why. I honestly have no reason to feel this way. I know barely anything about him. Maybe we had like beef in a past life or something. My brother would probably find him funny though, so. Leah Michelle illiterate theory. As much as I love any internet moment, I love ones with lore. And this one definitely delivers. It started all the way back in 2018. Back then, somebody decided to make a 40 minute long video explaining why they felt Leah Michelle was illiterate. They based it off the idea that Leah Michelle probably didn't learn how to read and write because she got famous Miss Young through Broadway and then went on a TV show after, so she didn't have time for school. And that's why she works with Ryan Murphy so much, because he knows her secret and he's willing to feed her lines. The people that believe this theory even think that her captions, where it's mostly emojis, are the ones that are written by Leah, versus the text captions, which are quite rare, are the ones that are written by her assistant. She actually responded to this back in 2018, but then TikTok got a hold of it again and it pretty much just restarted. Which in fairness, when you look at the clips, it's kind of not hard to believe. And the Emmy goes to... Don Roy King. This turned into absolute mayhem of people trying to figure out if Leah Michelle actually can't read or not. And all of her comments on TikTok just turned into people posting a series of emojis and then translating the comments. Considering all the moving parts that went into this, I think it definitely blogs in art and charts. Of course, I couldn't make this video without talking about the Finnebeam pick girl. Very quick synopsis on the situation. This TikTok influencer spends $2,000 on Harry Styles tickets on StubHub. They never make it to her account. They say that they can't get her equivalent seats, so she'll have to get balcony any tickets, but no, no. I'm gonna be in the pit. So she spends another couple grand on tickets and then makes a story time about how she spent $10,000 on Harry Styles and then expected the internet to be like, oh my God, that's like so quirky. I'm gonna be in the pit. Female gaze guy was sent in a few times. This is Kevin. Kevin has managed to accomplish something that women have been trying to explain for a very, very long time. This is what I love about TikTok actually. She just made that up. The difference between the male and female gaze. I also just find it strange that you can't just find someone attractive anymore. You have to like attach a think piece to it. Before the backlash though, most of the duets are people nodding so hard their heads look like they were gonna fall off. It's just astonishing to me that like women are resorting to like toe shortening surgery while men get their weirdo explained away by the female gaze. You can't conceive of what I'm capable of. Like personally, I'm getting Kubrick stare. I'm scared. I feel like technically he doesn't belong in any of these tiers, but for the sake of putting him somewhere, I'm gonna put him in anti-hero, mainly because Twitter did not let this man go for like a week straight and I got so tired of seeing this clip over and over again. Someone sent in Queen Die. Trisha Paytas' baby reincarnation side quest is definitely the funniest thing that came out of this. And I can't really rank the queen dying, so we're gonna do that instead. I think all around this is really fun. The jokes were good. The fact that Trisha responded to it so earnestly. Like truly genuine sympathy. It's really, really sad actually. It also gets bonus points for reminding me of all the niche ASMR videos she's been doing all year. We've been, uh, we've been working on this for a very long time. Like this is really funny. I'd say definitely Arden charts. Will Smith slapping Chris Rock was sent in a ton as well. Immediate anti-heroed. I want an apology from both of them. We had to sit through slap discourse for weeks. Celebrities were acting like somebody died. They were asking everyone and their mother what they thought about it. Like they were asking Liam Payne. I also felt there were three losers in one fight. He didn't know, being Chris Rock. He didn't want to do what he had to do, being Will Smith. And she did nothing. Like what are you talking about? This was terrible. The only good thing that came out of this was the why the frick TikTok. Okay. Why the frick did Chris Ross just punch Chris Ross in the penis? Rosalia chewing gum in her concert definitely had a moment too. I will say I think it was anti-hero though. Like it was fun for a bit, but it did get killed pretty quickly. Somebody sent the Steve Lacey concerts, which I will ask, does anybody who's gone to Steve Lacey concert actually listen to Steve Lacey? You fuckers, y'all sent the first verse twice. I swear every time I opened TikTok while this guy was on the road, he was just cold calling his audience on his own lyrics and they fucked it up every time. Like, does he have to put it on screen? This honestly wasn't even that funny though. It was kind of embarrassing. Hopefully that trend's left in 2022 for him because what the hell? I'm gay.
Actually, I'm not. I completely forgot that Misha Collins coming out of Street happened this year until someone sent it. I think this belongs in Subjective Sneak. It's borderline art and charts, but I feel like it wasn't as widely known, so I can't put it there. If there was anything I was expecting you guys to put in the form, it was Taylor Swift Private Jet Gate. This was so much fun. My entire timeline for like three days straight was just Taylor Swift Private Jet memes, and they just kept getting better. I think one of my favorite exchanges though was when a spokesperson came out and said that Taylor's jet was loaned, to which somebody said, then stop loaning it. I like her, but come on now, her PR team is doing the most this year. So you want pilots to not have a job? That is an art and charts easy. Guys, we do need to get a bit serious here for a second though. We lost a female icon this year in front of all of our eyes in broad daylight. The green M&M was neutered. They took away her pose, took her boots, gave her thermal wear. No, this is what happens when you pit two queens against each other. Why could they not just both have their shoes? Honestly, I don't think there's any ranking that could fit this. I think we need an in memoriam. If there's anything that can cleanse my mood right now, because I am feeling quite sad, it would be a certain Katy Perry jingle. This is an earworm. I don't give a shit. Katy Perry walked into the year 2022 and when I am going to produce the teenage dream of food delivery jingles. And that's exactly what she did. Say it with the class, her story. Now, from what I know, there's currently three different versions. Did somebody say just me? Did somebody say men you love? Did somebody say skip? Personally, I'd rank them as just eat, men you log, then skip. I think everybody knows where this one's going. Sing us to the top, Katie. If you had told me a year ago that I would have found Kamala Harris laughing to be one of the funniest things that came out of this year, I would have thought you were crazy. But here we are. That girl has the most infectious laugh I've ever heard. <laughs> she had a lot of clips that resurfaced this year that were really funny. Personal favorites would be the Venn diagram one. I love Venn diagrams. <laughs> I really do. I love Venn diagrams. It's just something about those three circles and the analysis about where there is the interest. Some people may think this belongs in subjective sneak, but I don't care. This is art and charts. Of course, the Don't Worry Darling press run was sent in a ton. I would argue this almost got anti-heroed but I feel like it belongs in art and charts. Like Spitgate was funny, but I think the salad dressing thing is what really tops it. Like you're telling me there's a possibility that Olivia Wilde saw this tweet then actually followed through on it? That's amazing. Some of you guys might not agree with me on this one. The Megan dance was sent in a ton. I think it was anti-heroed because when that trailer dropped, my entire timeline for 24 hours was just that video over and over and over again. And then I just never saw it. Poor Megan just wanted to throw it back. <laughs> Getting Chris was also a big thing. I honestly forgot that happened this year. Definitely good waiting for you to be great. Like it was funny for what it was. I have not seen it since it was a thing and I feel like it's better that way. Okay, next we have pink sauce. Listen, this is what you guys get for entertaining mayonnaise as an acceptable condiment because I can line up all of these guys and tell you which one the pink sauce is cousins with and they're both revolting. I never really understood why this was so shocking as a concept though. Like I feel like people have been eating like weird, wildly colored things for a while now. Granted, I think those were probably approved by the FDA. But yeah, this looks gross. I don't know why anyone would buy this. One of my personal favorite form submissions was somebody who just said, I'm very drank and I can only think about Heidi Klum worm costume. It's one of those things where it's like, frankly, terrifying, but you also can't look away from it. Like up close, she kind of looks like a piece of tempeh bacon. I would say a good waiting for you to be great though. Like, I feel like I'm not gonna see this after this year. Or at least I hope I don't. It's kind of scary. BBL Drake is an easy art in charts. This shit had so many variations. Do your thing, 21, do your thing. It is so funny. <laughs> The Twitter parody account era was short-lived for sure, but very fun. You had people posing as pharmaceutical companies and tanking their stock after tweeting, we are excited to announce insulin is free now. Someone posing as the official Nintendo account. I mean, they were getting everyone. They even pretended to be Shane Dawson and say that he didn't try to fuck a cat. Oh. Right. I think the parody accounts deserve art and charts though. This is another pretty obvious subjective sneak because I'm the one submitting it, but Addison Ray's music. I didn't like obsess that much, but I got it bad. Very good pop music. You have to be of a certain IQ to understand it. Or have a few screws loose. Whatever's easier. Of course, Bing Chillin was sent in a ton. While I was searching for the translation though, I came across this website that called them lyrics. So I looked into it a bit more and realized that the entire clip shows him singing. Like, why is he pulling a Bart Baker? The I'm a star from Pearl clip showed up quite a lot, not surprised. Oh! This clip was made eons funnier when someone made the observation that it sounds like she's saying no Emma Stone in an Australian accent. Please Emma Stone! It's literally all I can hear now. Nor. Unique to me is a classic, okay? This one was fun. Unique. 
I think we put her in subjective sneak. There is nowhere else I could put the Morbius meme other than the art and charts tier. The fact that the internet collectively came together to shitpost their way into convincing a studio to re-release a shit movie just to let it flop again? Compliments the chef. Beautiful work by everyone involved. I think we have our final ranking though. Obviously this doesn't cover every meme and pop culture moment, but I feel like we covered all the big ones, or at least the ones that are relevant to us. If you would have ranked anything differently, definitely let me know in the comments down below. You can also follow me on Twitch for live streams or my second channel for edited versions of those live streams. Or if you want to follow me outside of YouTube, I'll have all my social media links in the pinned comment down below. Thank you so much for the support you guys have given me this past year. It really means a lot. I hope you guys all have a really safe and happy holiday and I'll see you in the new year. Thank you.